Thanks for sticking around. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we had a little bit of a hiccup there. Um, there was a bit of troll activity on, on, on my Facebook page causing a few problems and uh, I had to report it to Facebook and um, that caused a few things to go wrong. Um, the weather's atrocious, uh, floods and wind and everything out here. So live broadcasting on when there's torrential rain and floods around is not necessarily the best plan in the world. But here we are. We are live. Um, we've made it. What a stressful hour getting ready. <laughs> Would it be bad if I had an alcoholic drink while I was painting? No, I can't do that, can we? What we'll do is we'll have a glass of water. We've got Polly to keep us company here as well. But anyway, thank you for <laughs> thank you for joining us. I need to relax now. That was a stressful half an hour getting ready. I need to relax and do a little bit of a little bit of watercolor painting. Nobody's watching, only 180 people, so there's no pressure. Um, and today is all about animals. We're painting animals, okay? Um, you wouldn't believe what goes into broadcasting live. Um, all the cameras and all the setup you have to have. It really is quite a in-depth thing. And I've been doing this for quite a while. Um, and every so often you get a few hiccups. You never know what's going to happen. But let me tell you this. If it does happen to go off at any point, if we get any issues with anything, don't you fear because... This is being recorded, so it will be uploaded as well onto Facebook. And talking about Facebook, Matthew Palmer Artist is my Facebook page. Uh, make sure you head on down to the little description for this video and make sure you click on the click on the old um, the old like button. That'd be wonderful. Um, but thank you for joining us, and hope you enjoy this demo. I need to. <laughs> it's been a long day, but anyway, we're talking about animals. Look. What we've got here is a few examples of animals that I paint. This is not what I'm going to paint today. I just want to show you some of the kind of stuff that I like to do uh, animals-wise. I've been painting animals. When I say I've been painting animals, I just want to make it clear that I've been painting pictures of animals, not actually painting animals, because that's wrong and you shouldn't do it. We've got a tiger. We've got a squirrel. This is the kind of stuff I like to do, and I want to do something like this with you today. We also have... A hummingbird. Now, this is one of the paintings from the new book. We'll talk about the new book in a second. And there's Woody Woodpecker as well. So that's the kind of stuff I like to do. That's my kind of painting. Um, okay, now, over the past two years, over the past two years, I've been uh, working on a book with, there it is, up here, near Polly, uh, the guys, the amazing guys at Search Press. And I want to say a big thank you to everybody that has, has supported me over at Search Press um, over the years. So, the new book. It's available for pre-order. And I want to say it's not out until sort of late Feb, early March-ish, around that time. Now, I've, I've got an advanced copy here. Uh, it's called Ready to Paint, 30 Minutes... Uh, animals in watercolor. Now this has got 32 step-by-step -step projects and it starts off with all these wonderful tracings on this gorgeous tracing paper. A lot of hard work has gone into this, not just from me, but from uh, people all throughout Search Press. Um, and this book is rammed with beautiful step-by-step -step projects. Elephants, flamingos, domestic cats and dogs, zebras, 
zebras, there's a cat there. Just want to show you a few little sneaky peeks how to sketch dogs, beautiful bunny. So this is available uh, to pre-order. Um, I've popped a link in the um, description for this video. So if you're interested in pre-ordering a copy of this, we are selling some signed and numbered. Signed and numbered first editions are available on this website, which is sort of down here, sort of there-ish, watercolour TV. So if you want to get a pre-ordered one, drop into there you can get yourself a pre-order as well lots of you have already ordered them thank you i've not got many left of the first 500 signed and numbered editions but if you want to get one ordered you can drop over to watercolor tv i will say this though the book isn't out for a few weeks please remember that i've had so many people saying my book's not turned up there's one copy exists and it's in mr palmer's hand it is a pre-order a definite first edition okay enough talk and let's get some painting done. It's about bloody time. This is the sketch. This is the sketch for Clarence the lion. There he is. There's Clarence in all his glory. And uh, that's what we're going to work on. We're going to work on Clarence over the next hour-ish. You know, it's better than watching the news. So if you want to sketch this in feel free, this is what I've got sketched in on my actual sheet of paper here. So you can see it there. It's quite a big sheet of paper. This is about A3. So I've got it sketched in ready. Let's talk about some colours and a few little bits of materials. Now I've got all my colours squirted in the palette here, uh, ready for action. And I've got a load of paints here. And I'll talk more about these as I progress through the actual painting. But I'm going to be using the likes of natural grey. This is a beautiful sort of shadow colour. We've got some natural yellow. These are how the colours are. They're branded up as Matthew Palmer colours, you can see there. I've got my own range of paints. Natural grey, natural yellow, natural brown. Uh, we've got orange. We've got some skin tones here. Light and dark skin tone, beautiful colours. And I want to be using variations of these colours. Now, if you've not got these colours, you know, why not? But if you haven't, don't worry, because you can use primary colours. You can pretty much use any colours you like. It really doesn't matter. But stick with us, folks. This is going to be quite a lengthy demo. Loads of nice detail. But there's nothing, well, certainly in the UK, there's nothing better to do, is there? Come on, for being honest. Back to this. We've got the main colours. Uh, we've got the brushes. Three brushes, standard brushes, around 20, around 10, around 6. They're kind of standard off-the-shelf brushes. But then I've got some quirky brushes that we may or may not use. It's live, remember? I don't know. We've got the brushes here. We've got a, a uh, the new Fantastic, small, medium, large. We've got a Matthew Palmer lift-out brush. And we've got some brushes for doing some detail a little bit later, okay? All these brushes, all the brushes will end up being used at some point. Um, and you can see I'm working from tube colour as well, which is great. And uh, that just means that I can I can produce some nice, vibrant painting. Again, there's the sketch. So that's the sketch. I'm going to get stuck in in a second. I've got a hairdryer floating around as well. Um, if you're watching this back, you know, it's very much a demonstration that I'm doing today. So I will be working at a pretty quick pace. Just please bear that in mind. This will be a very quick demo. Um, so if you're trying to work along, that's when you want to be doing more something like like this. A look at that. A lovely, well-timed advert. Um, live virtual watercolour workshop with Matthew Palmer, Sunday the 24th of Jan. Head on over to Watercolour TV. There's a link in this post for the video. And just remember these are very much slow and steady i've been teaching live workshops now uh for quite a while for well over a year and people's loving the live workshops very thorough days painting an owl in the moonlight so that's something that you may be interested in again the link is in the description now let's get on to the picture and we'll chuck some paint on this now my first thing to do is to get the biggest brush and I want to wet the entire sheet of watercolour paper here. So basically top to bottom, okay? So a nice coverage. Pencil, this is just a 2B or not to be pencil. 
so I'm wetting it all. It's cotton paper. It's £140. That's bloody expensive. 300 gram, 300 gram, or £140. Clarence the Lion. Does anybody remember Stanley Holloway's monologues? I don't, because I'm too young, but my dad used to love them. I think it was Clarence, Clarence the Lion or something like that. Albert and the Lion, that's it, Albert and the Lion. What's he talking about? It's full of waffle. Now, I've wet the entire sheet of paper, as you can see, uh, a couple of times because I just want to paint in the background, colours wise, I'm going to get straight in, we're going to build this thing up. I've got some kitchen roll. I normally say for when I start crying, but I already started that about half an hour ago. And what we're going to do here is go straight in to some of this natural yellow. It's a sandstone colour. Uh, we've also got some orange that I'm going to use and some of the skin tones. But first of all, natural yellow is going to feature. And I'm literally going to work a little bit by scribbling around the background. Very loose watercolour vignette on this picture. But I'm just working central. For this i'll get close in when we get towards detail and we can start to sweep some colors coming down here as well so very loose with the color pretty much covering everything even the eyes just just don't work around the eyes just go for it big sweeps of watercolor here this is just a single color very simply called natural yellow which is very much a sandstone color so i'm pretty much covering everything here at this point working wet into wet okay can't go wrong can you you can already smell the excitement yeah there was somebody trolling the original video post and that and i think that fired a few alarm bells on uh, on uh, on the live stream which was which was not good okay that's that that's just that color back to the palette again what i want to do here is go for so we're a little bit late starting which means we'll be a bit later finishing well, that's fine. We've got natural orange. Bring some orange into this. Mixing with the yellow. Starting to work a little bit more precise around some of the key areas. Working down the centre here. It'll grow on you. Obviously, it's not orange that we're wanting, but it's just nice to get that variation of tone. Working around. Lovely. Okay, continuing. But what I want to do here is down the brush, go for a 10 and slightly darker so at this point i'm introducing natural brown with natural orange now again if you've not got these colors you can just mix your own version if you like but a little bit darker here um with with that color i'm gonna get some more of that natural yellow in there as well and i'm literally taking advantage of the paper being nice and wet here starting to get a little bit darker but not necessarily all over with the darkness just randomly in places Now again, in that um, book I was talking about, the uh, new book, Animals in Watercolour, it will talk through, and of course it's classic search press detail, um, wonderfully photographed, um, described, every brushstroke described in photograph, photographic detail, and of course, in, uh, in all the stages as well. So a lovely little uh, thing to pick up, folks. But again, it is a pre-order at the minute. It's not actually available yet. And if you want to get yourself a signed copy posted to you, head on over to Watercolor TV. The uh, website's sort of down here. No, it's down there. Sort of here somewhere. There it is. And you'll see where you can get hold of one of those. I'm just going to put a few little flicks. Paper's still wet. It's lovely working with a nice paper like this. This is cotton paper which means that the paper stays nice and wet for absolutely ages, which is what you want, you know, it's what you want. All very much a bit sort of spiritual at the minute. It'll, it'll grow. I 
it'll grow as we progress. We get a little bit more darkness coming in here because I'm starting to introduce some shadows. Now, I'm sure this is better than watching the news. But is it better than watching the chase? Of course it is. Bring it in. What's the chase? I don't know what the chase is. Bring it in. That's like my hair at the minute. That's Matthew's lockdown haircut at the minute. <laughs> Desperate for a hair chop. Bring it down. It's lovely to work on, on paper while it's damp. It really is. It works lovely. Pop some little bits of, little bits of detail. I'm going to go a little bit darker now, folks, with the colour. So I'm actually going to use that brown again. But I'm going to introduce some natural grey. We've not really mentioned much about that yet. It is a shadow colour and it's a very important colour. But I'm going to wipe the excess off on the tissue. But we can get a little bit closer in here as well for this one. Just a touch. And... Uh, we can start to pull in some some darker colours like inside the ears. So I'm trying to keep all this nice wet into wet background. But can you see I've gradually gone darker as I've progressed through the picture down at the back of that ear. This is a good advert for a nice paper this. This is why you should always get a good quality cotton paper. This particular one is the one that I have made for me. It's called Matthew Palmer paper, believe it or not. Um, and it's um, it's very much a, a cotton premium surface. Has anybody used this who's watching the demo? Let me know in the comments, won't you? So I'm just basically working in some of the dark areas. I will start to rotate the board around at this point, okay? So you'll start to see it, it jumping all over the place down the back of that ear there so it's almost like a it's almost like a negative painting effect what are you doing here work across the top here there's all nice nice sort of tall hairs hanging around and of course what we'll do on this painting is we'll make the focus about the eyes in the mouth you've got to wait for that because that's the bit that's the bit that makes the difference because that's where it really starts to pull its own way you know now i've gone really strong with that gray you can see how thick it is here because i want to start to go in and get some dark into the mouth at this point now i shall make this more intense as we progress, but I want to go nice and dark in a few areas as we go through. Of course, in them, their nostrils. Now, I'm still using a size 10 brush. That's quite a big brush. Well, I'm too lazy to reach over for a smaller brush. It's a good foot and a half away. Quite a pointy brush, this one. If it wasn't, There'd be no, uh, wait for it, there'd be no point in using it. Bring that down. And like I say, folks, I shall blend this in. I shall be going darker. We're going to work around the eyes a little bit here as well with the shadow. It's, it's good to do as much as you can while the paper is damp. With the grey. You can see that brush is quite pointy. Let's get a bit closer in. I remember we are live here, so, you know, there's no editing. You'd be surprised how many people have sent me emails saying, can't you edit them live videos that you do? The BBC can do it. There we go. Bring that over. <laughs> Again, still getting quite dark. I will blend those in in a minute, but I want to go into those ears. Very strong in the ears that's another one of those really strong areas make sure things are really dark around here turn the board around because it's it's a bit damp and i'm always a bit scared about touching 
it's not Fontaine paper this it's it's manufactured by Claire Fontaine but it's not Fontaine paper don't get it mixed up this is this is called Matthew Palmer paper and a few people have made that mistake where they've ordered Fontaine paper it's it's a version of that but it's very different paper so don't get them mixed up will you Let's make sure things are quite dark in here. Beautiful. Now what we'll do, folks, is clean the brush, wipe it on tissue, and then just with a damp brush, I'm going to soften this down. It's still damp. It's lovely that it's still it's still workable, and I can I can manipulate the paint. It's one of the great things about watercolor, you know, how you can sort of control it. But, but we can clearly see how he how he is taking shape. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Um, okay, I'm gonna continue. Continue. It's not dry yet. It's blowing a gale. I'm surprised you can't hear it. I've had to put a noise filter on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. So we've got some uh, natural brown and some natural yellow mixed together, which will give us a. Uh, brown or yellow i want to use that with the same brush and what i want to do is just get a little bit of movement here and there again look at that the paper's still damp beautiful just adding a few shadows start to get some some length into the into those hairs, into that mane. Again, so working around. You see how that's brought that forward? Bit of a beard at the minute, but we'll work that in. Blend it down. If it doesn't blend for you, just clean your brush, wipe it on tissue. Now just remember that, I know a few people do say to me, can you slow down, but this is a demo don't get this mixed up with a workshop and i've said it before but if you want to do a a workshop these are the thing to do folks these are very much live pretty much every weekend very enjoyable things to do please please get yourself booked on the link is in the uh, the post for this video and uh, well worth a a go if you've not had a go at one of these things before um there's no time like the present is there let's pull some lines down here So this is kind of the edge of the painting, which is nice, just to bring a few little bits of long, long hairs. So again, that starts to pull that side out. It's all about creating the shape. Just picked up a bit of the grey there. And I'm going to go a little bit darker at the top here, back of that ear. Now all this can get blended in if we need to. Yes, so I just had a question come through on an email. Uh, it's an owl that we're doing at the workshop on Sunday, an owl. Owl in the moonlight, a barn owl. Learning some of these techniques and some new techniques, of course. That little bit on that ear, the paper's starting to dry now, so it means more blending's involved. Now, this is what you do on yours if yours were drying off. You would actually put the paint on and then blend it in. But I love the softness there. Now, that paper is very, very wrinkly, it's very wavy. Uh, which means I do need to be thinking about giving this thing a bit of a dry in a second. But I'm just going to pull in a few little bits of dark around here, just a couple of bits. And then I'll blend those in because the paper is very much drying at this point. Bit of negative painting up the top there. Negative painting is leaving the positive shape behind. And I've dampened the brush. 
and then we're going to blend all this in just using water but I did give it a tap on tissue before I did the blending here so you can see how it, how nice and simple it is now you saw some of the paintings what I were doing previously um, at the start of this this demo and they're very detailed but you know they were done at my own leisure not so much as a demonstration demonstrations are very different of course because demonstrations are you know you're conscious you're conscious that people are, are watching and potentially getting a bit bored because if we're being honest it is a bit like watching paint dry in it you know what i'm saying so it's kind of you know it's 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 thinking about that at the same time let's go darker down here so you tend to work a little bit looser a little bit freer when you do a a demo which is sometimes not a bad thing all the times when wash that bit off that's where my hand keeps going on what I'm going to do while I'm drying this picture off is I want to wind up your smart speaker at home so if you've got one of those speakers like Alexa or something like that Amazon Echo whatever you call it I want to get you some inspirational music playing in the background because when I use the hairdryer folks what will happen is the audio will go completely off because the um, the camera doesn't like or should I say that the microphone doesn't like the uh, the um, noise of the hairdryer it kind of mutes itself which is not a bad thing because it causes a few spikes in audio so while I dry this off with the hairdryer which is over here just have a look at Polly a minute here it is. Um, I want to wind up your smart speaker. Alexa, play The Circle of Life by Elton John. Is that watching paint dry? If you was waiting for music playing over this video, we're not allowed to play any music on a live broadcast because of this wonderful thing called copyright, but you can play it on your speaker. Alexa, play The Circle of Life from The Lion King. No music here, but you get it hopefully where you are, but not here, can't do it. Um, there you go, so that's all nice and uh, nice and dry, folks. Now what I've done is I've also kind of flattened it down a little bit as well at the same time um which is a good thing because it means we can sort of keep it nice and uh, nice and flat and there we go we've got that 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 could sort of starting point of uh, clarence the line now we'll get close into this we can see how it's starting to take a little bit of shape we're now going to use a number six brush and pretty much use the same colors with one exception uh, a couple of exceptions the nose and the eyes so nice and close in here um, I've got a colour over here which is light light skin tone. We're going to use some light skin tone here. 
and we've also got some dark skin tone as well so light and dark skin tone both of those colors are going to work together we've got the light skin tone first and we're going to pop in some color with a number six brush over the top of this nose here and we'll take some dark skin tone i'm just going to pop in a little bit of that just to give some variation and then while that is a little bit on the damp side using that good strong natural gray that we mentioned we can make sure it's really quite dark at the bottom with a few spots hanging around here and there so that's using that that really strong gray that we spoke about a little bit earlier and also we're going to go darker and cleaner inside the mouth area as well and really really quite dark gray now natural gray is made from primary colors so it's a very definite gray inside those nostrils there bring it out nice clean brush and then we're going to soften that down a touch again just focusing more on what's on those areas So we're getting some real strength of colour coming around those areas. Don't be afraid. Of the dark. So I'm basically just going back into those key areas like the eyes, the mouth, etc. And bringing that nice bit of shape into it. Lovely. It's going to also be quite dark in here as well. A little bit on the edge of the ear as well. A bit of water just to encourage that to disappear. Nice. And then of course on this side, just a few little bits of darkness coming in. Just around the edge of the ear. It's nice to uh, when you start to bring dark in because that's where the picture really starts to get that little bit of oomph about it, you know. Now if we have a quick look at the palette, um, this kind of browny colour here, so it's actually a mixture of that natural yellow with the brown. And I'll pop a bit of grey into it, but it's not quite as dark as grey on its own, but it's still um, a fairly dark colour because I need to get some shape and form around this area at this point. It's kind of there, but it's not strong enough for the picture. So I'm working in some of these key areas. I'm just using water so the paper's nice and dry so I'm working 
uh, wet on dry wet brush dry paper and I'm just using water with a couple of spots on tissue because you don't want too much water when you blend in wet on dry you just want to keep it nice and nice and clean there a little bit darker down here as well So starting to really build up shadows. Not being afraid to go in with the dark. Because as we all know, it's the dark that makes these things work. And literally I'm water, quick spot on tissue, and then that's enough for me to blend. If I spike the brush a little bit, or actually if I use one of these these fan brushes, these are lovely for this. Look at these beautiful brushes here. Gorgeous. Let's get close into this because you can really start to pull in some detail here. You get some lovely nice for whiskers as well. I want to get to those a little bit later. But you can start to pull in some nice random texture. So this is called the Matthew Palmer Fantastic. This is the small one. And it's just going to be lovely. So I'm just using some grey at this point. And what I'm doing is creating that nice bit of sort of realism in the fur. Giving a little bit of extra. It's like a random fan brush. When I designed these brushes a couple of years ago, it was the animal portraits were the thing I wanted to make more than anything. And of course, we'll bring in some other colours as well. You know, this is just the next stage. Okay. So, uh, Quite a nice, quite a nice effect here. And of course I can bring in any other colours with these brushes. And I'm actually sharpening up some areas as I do this at the same time. So I've just mixed up some orange and some um, natural yellow at that point. And I'm literally just darting around this thing. Make it all nice and loose. Now obviously we've not got to the eyes yet. That's going to make a big difference putting the eyes in. And I'm blending that little shadow there. Watercolor is dead easy to rework, of course. Close into the mouth here, we're going to bring in a touch more colour around here. So that's back to the orange and the yellows and then wet that area, blend it in. Because what you're going to get here is little tiny spots where the the whiskers are, and these are always nice to put in a 
and that little picture, little tiny dots. Now, because the painting, because it's damp, it's obviously going to spread, which is exactly what you want it to do here. So. So it's now onto those key areas and obviously that's going to be eyes, nose and mouth because that's the focal point of a picture like this. But there's just randomly scattered around, there's just little tiny bits of detail, little markings, a few scrapes and scratches, a few wrinkles here and there. This chap's got some character he has. So we want to drop in little bits of dark on these edges with the nose for example. Little, just little tiny bits of of darkness, wherever we feel the need. It works every time. Slightly pinch the brush here, just to bring in some, oh, I could use that fan brush, but just that little bit of texture, just kind of weaving in that area there. It's all kind of making this a focal point. There he is. I think he's less of a Clarence now. He's more of a... A Leo, yes, he's more of a Leo. Actually, my mum's a, uh, a Leo, so she might like this. So don't forget, folks, to get those pre-orders in for that book, um, and I will show you again at the end for those people that are interested that's the animals in watercolor you can pick it up from search press of course or you can buy it from um watercolor tv which you'll get a signed signed and numbered version if you if that's of interest to you um it's not officially released yet it's not actually out until um late feb early march so but as soon as it turns up on the shores and it lands here at the warehouse we'll get it sent out to you of course we will and uh, you can enjoy it 32 32 projects in watercolors to enjoy i want to turn that around a little bit here folks because i want to go darker around here and use a bit of water to smooth that paint away i love that when you put those beautiful shadows in this is an australian um line which you don't see many of but there's one here we've never seen one before i want to pop a little bit of shadow pop a little bit of shadow down here And down there as well it really is I've always said for years you know painting is like Tesco's now if you're not from the UK you might not know what Tesco's is it's it it's is it the biggest supermarket chain probably um, and the reason I say painting is like Tesco's it's because every little helps and that's that's no more true than an animal than an animal you know always gonna be the case look at that hair Probably about the same look. Let's just uh, a 
tidy up a few areas here and there. Almost ready for those eyes. Beautiful. Excellent. Okay, let's get close into those eyes. But I mean, so far, we have this wonderful sort of vignette style background really taking a nice bit of shape there so really pleased with how that's how that's kind of coming out um, today so i'm just going to bring in some uh, some work onto those eyes now the eyes of the big cats are very different to your domestics um there's not a huge amount of color you get like a bit of a sort of burnt sienna kind of color now i want to use dark skin tone for this but you could use a pale burnt sienna for that mix it with a bit of orange um, but it doesn't want a huge amount of colour here. The background colour is not a million miles off what it actually is. Now a domestic cat, of course, has the sort of classic sort of, um, almost like a sort of slit. Whereas your big cats, your snow leopards, your tigers, your lions have more of a round sort of eye. Um, but what we do first is we put a wash of this colour on. Now this is this, this is dark skin tone but very diluted. On both, of course. Put that colour on first. Use a bit of water. Blend it in. So it's got that slight sort of pink tinge to it, which is nice because it, it stands out quite well. And then what we do, the most important thing, and something people forget about, is the shadow. There's always going to be a shadow across the top of the eye. And that's cast. That's the same as your eyes as well. Cast because the light's coming down, it puts the shadow, and then we get a good strong bit of that grey. Now, like I say, I'm using natural grey, which is very much a cold grey. And we're going to drop in the actual eye, the pupil, which is like a very sort of, almost like a little like elliptical soft shape. Just here. Now, yes, I shall put the highlights on as well, but that wants to be quite strong. the minute nice while it's drying off for a second let's come down to the nose here because what I want to do here is do a little bit of clean up and just do a little bit of paint removal We've actually removed some of that, that colour and making sure that the darkness inside nicely blends as well. Lovely. And then just dragging a few individual lines coming out of the mouth there. some texture I could use the fan brush here as well so you can't see that I'm just I'm just dragging some color in a few areas just a few random areas of, of, of dark Beautiful. 
Now onto the eyes then. Um, I'm going to pop a few um, highlights around the picture um, very soon, but I just want to get some white paint. Um, so I'm using some uh, some like gouache or something similar. Now I want to pop this on a scrap piece of paper because I do tend to um, forget whites in the palette. So a little bit of white would be quite effective here. Uh, brush wise, here I've got a branch in detail brush which I want to mix into the white. Branch in detail brush. Again, it's another one of my own brushes. It's a beautiful detailer. It's up to you whether you want to use, you know, this or something, something different. And of course, we'll pop the highlight in the eye, which is always going to make a difference. Instantly brings it alive. Uh, we are nice and close in, which is great because I like to pop a little bit of light and it depends how much of a line you can get out of the brush. I like to pop a little bit of light in some of the corners of the eyes. For me, it just brings the whole thing alive. So well done for those people that have stuck around. I know a few people have drifted off, but well done for those who have stuck around because when the white comes into play, same as on the nose as well, that little bit of sort of shine that you get on the cat's nose is always good. Beautiful. And even down here, look, little bits of individual gorgeous brushes look at those little bits of not whiskers but you know that little bits of fair uh, lions don't have big whiskers <laughs> just a few and I, I, i'm just going to use this i'm just going to use this brush because it's loaded up ready i could save myself a job here and use the fan brush but uh because i'm loaded i'm going to use this here and pop some whiskers in Try and flick off at the end. Can I say flick off on an afternoon? Probably not. Probably not. But I love that little bit just on the edge there. It's lovely just to see how you can really get light in. And even just a few little hints. On some of those corners. It just makes a feature. Let's have a look at the eyes again. Look how beautiful they look. Stunning on the eyes. No matter how many time I've painted animal pictures, it's always the eyes without a question that do it. And it's it's nine times out of ten, it's gonna be the last thing that you do. No, that sounds quite dramatic. The last thing that you paint. <laughs> That's better. No, that sounds even worse. The last thing you paint on the picture of the animal that you're doing. I know what I meant. Let's just pop a few little bits on the corners. So yeah, well done for sticking around, folks, because it's um, it's it's difficult, but you have to finish your painting. I think that most people get that, um, but some people, you know, kind of sort of realise if you've not if the picture's not working for yourself, you know, as maybe as a beginner, I don't know what level you are, obviously. But it's always going to be these last bits that make it and that's that's no more true than if you're doing something like a an animal so you've always got to finish off your picture it's so easy to put in a few highlights here and there look just to give some extra detail which is good a few extra whiskers here and there A little bit on the edge of that ear. A little bit of white. Make it look crisper. Just a touch more on the nose. And a few little flicks of white around there as well.
Now these sorts of paintings always look nice, you know, with that, that sort of vignette style edge. And I've always been quite a big fan of, of, of that sort of style. Always enjoyed it. And I think on a picture like this, it would equally look nice with a nice frame around it as well. Um, so a good signature sort of somewhere in the corner would look quite good. Let's get close into them eyes. Let's just look at them and let's go into a trance. Look around the eyes, not into the eyes. Yes, you will pre-order Matthew's animal book. <laughs> and yes, you will book on the painting workshop, Sunday the 24th of January. A few spaces left, folks. Handful of spaces left. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. Let's have a close-up look at this thing. Let's come back here. Love the eyes. Then we'll sort of have a look at the mouth. A look at the mouth area. The detail in the mouth. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Love it. And then we'll come back to the whole thing. And that was a, a fairly quickly painted um, demo. Less than an hour, folks, but we didn't start till about quarter past four. It was a bit, it was a bit delayed because of the old uh, Facebook problems. Or we'll call it face ache, shall we, today? So there you go, animals in watercolour. I really do hope you enjoyed watching that picture being cre created live, live here from Derbyshire on a wet and windy day. Let's take the tape away. We were coming stuck. Beautiful and uh, a pleasure. What a pleasure that was to work on um, with you there today. So hope you enjoyed it as well. Thanks for uh, for tuning in. Um, don't forget folks, get yourself booked into one of these virtual workshops, head on over to Search Press of course, thank you to Monica for helping with the setup of this, thanks to everybody at Search Press and I am working on some new books with Search Press as we speak at the minute, but don't forget to get yourself a copy of the new animal book, ready to paint, there I am, in 30 minutes, animals in watercolour, again a quick flick through, you can see some of the wonderful projects that we've got here really a beautiful look at that meerkat beautiful book folks and uh well worth every penny I'm, I'm sure you will agree so thank you so much and uh keep well keep sane keep safe and keep the paint flowing keep the paint flowing i'll see you soon all right bye <laughs>